Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for our second edition of Much Brew About Nothing. So, you probably know, yesterday we played some Red Black Goblins, and it didn't go very well. It felt really bad, it ran really bad, we didn't win very much, so all around, eh, the main thing we took away from Red Black Goblins is it really made us want to play 8 Whack Goblins, so we're back today with some 8 Whack Goblins. Gonna do a super quick deck tech. You probably have seen this deck before in Budget Magic or somewhere, but this is a non-budget version of 8 Whack, although it's worth pointing out even the non-budget version is still under 200 bucks, and also worth mentioning, with a couple of small sideboard changes that aren't that important or meaningful, like going down the Blood Moon, changing Shattering Spree to Smash to Smithereens, you can get the deck down under like 150 bucks. So, anyway, a quick reminder before we break down 8 Whack for Modern. If you enjoy this deck, and you enjoy Much of Brew in general, it would be amazing of you if you could take a quick second, click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So, let's talk 8 Whack, starting with the two namesake cards. So, the deck, people People always wonder why is it called 8 Whack, and the reason is we're playing 8 Bushwhackers, and these are the key cards in the deck. Reckless Bushwhacker, Goblin Bushwhacker, they're essentially the same card. There's a slight twist, but the big deal is 2 mana, they pump all of our team plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, and they also give all of our creatures haste. So the idea of this deck is we're going to play a bunch of really cheap, really fast goblins, get in as much damage as quickly as possible, and then hopefully close out the game with one or two copies of our Bushwhackers to just force through even more damage, kill our opponent. So Bushwhackers, the namesake cards, the key cards, the cards that make the deck really work. Compared to yesterday's goblin deck, we are all about being as fast as possible. We're looking to kill our opponent by turn four. If things go really well by turn three, if things go badly by turn five, but turn four, we're looking to have our opponent dead in most games. So we also have Goblin Chieftain, only a two of, we're not a Lord heavy deck, instead we're using these temporary Bushwhacker Lords, which also give our team haste, but Goblin Chieftain is kind of like the 10th, 9th and 10th copies of our Bushwhacker, except it costs additional mana. It does bump our team, it does have haste, it does give our stuff haste, but it costs three mana instead of two mana, which makes it worse than our Bushwhackers in the deck, but it's still a fine way to force through some more damage. The rest of our deck, we got a million one-drops, so Foundry Street Denizen is actually really scary. We usually want to lead on Foundry Street or Goblin Guide if we have the choice, but Foundry Street comes down on the following turn. If we play Goblin, it's hitting for two. If we play two Goblins, it's hitting for three. So it gets through a lot of damage really quickly. Goblin Guide, just the best one-drop ever printed, gets in for two right away. It gives our opponents lands, but we kill our opponent so quickly with this deck that we don't really care about our opponent drawing extra lands. Legion Loyalist, really, really important for certain situations. It helps after blockers come down. By giving our team first strike and trample, we should always have three creatures to turn on battalion. It also makes it so lingering souls can't block our stuff. If it wasn't for legion loyalists, lingering souls would be devastating against our deck. But with legion loyalist making it so it can't block, lingering souls is actually pretty bad against our deck when we have legion loyalist. And then mog fanatic, just an additional one drop, pings in for an extra damage directly if we need it to. Rounding out our creatures, goblin pile driver is our big hitter. It gets huge if we attack with let's say four other goblins. It gets plus eight plus zero if we have our legion loyals. It's also trampling. So one of the ways we close out a lot of games is giving pile driver haste. Like if we do get to four mana, we can play a pile driver, play a bushwhacker, give it haste, attack with it and all of our other goblins. It just hit our opponent for absurd amounts of damage. Mog War Marshal is strangely synergistic because it puts two goblin bodies on the battlefield, which means it double pumps our Foundry Street Denizen on turn two. After that, on like turn three, turn four, it's hitting for a lot of damage with our Bushwhackers, essentially hitting for four damage split up across two bodies, and then one Goblin Heal Cutter, a way to get through blockers, I don't know if it's fully necessary, kind of a weird one of, but if our opponent has some Tarmogoyfs or Death Shadows for blocking, it is a good way to dash through and force in some damage when we need to. As far as the spells in our deck, the other great thing about 8 Whack Goblins is we have a ton of direct damage. Goblin Guide is probably the best card in our deck, while 
the Bushwhackers get all the credit. Five damage for one mana to a creature or a player is just an absurdly good rate. We always have goblins around to sack, or usually have goblins around to sack. So this is a way we force through maybe 10 damage with our goblins, and then a combination of goblin grenades and lightning bolts can finish off our opponent. Mana base, really simple. 19 mountains, everything comes into play on tap, no colorless lands, nothing like that. As far as the sideboard, bunch of graveyard hate, Tormod scripts, relics, craft diggers cage, have some artifact destruction and shattering spree and smash to smithereens, dragon claw for burn to gain some life, skull crack to prevent life gain from our opponents, reality hemorrhage looks weird like a bad shock, but it's colorless, so it gives us a way to kill core firewalker at champion, goblin rabble master, I guess it's for control matchups, I don't actually ever sideboard it in, probably should just drop it, and then one blood moon, just to jank out some opponents, comes in against Tron or anything that's soft to Blood Moon. And that is 8 whack for Modern, and that's our Much of Brew deck for today. So I'm just going to get to it. The deck is awesome. I'm super excited to show it off. So let's get to the league. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the gameplay, and I will talk to you soon. If you're looking for a fashionable way to support the channel, make sure to check out the Ixalan t-shirt over at mtgoldfishmerch.com. All right, much brew time. After the nightmare that was Red Black Goblins, <laughs> we're playing some 8 whack Goblins. Probably better known as Good Goblins. <laughs> it's been a while. This is a non-budget build, but it's still one of the most budget-friendly intro decks for Modern. Oh boy, opponent's rampant. Utopia Sprawl on red. All right, looks like Ponza. Well, Mountain, Foundry Street, Denizen, and pass the turn. This hand's super good if our lands don't get destroyed. We only have 19 lands in this deck, which is not a high number. Opponent cracks Windswept Eath, Forest... More Utopia Sprawls. And passes. We'll play the Mountain. Play Foundry Street Denizen. Play Foundry Street Denizen. Get in for three. A Sweeper would also be really bad. Opponent shouldn't be able to tighten this turn, but they're not that far away from tightening. Blood Braid. Cascades. Alright, just a Birds of Paradise. That could have been way worse. Misty. Opponent's down to two cards. Also close to Titan mana, though. We kind of just want to land here. Goblin Guide. Well, play Mogwar Marshal. Do some pumping. Token. Pumping. Go to combat. Do some attacking. Cross our fingers for no Inferno Titan. Opponent blocks. Yep. Down to ten. Alright, Chandra's not Inferno Titan. Ticks up. Storm Breath. Okay. I think we're a land away from just winning. Stomping Grounds. Tapped. I mean, if we draw a land, we should win for sure. If we don't draw a land, we're still in pretty good shape. So War Marshal dies. Because if we draw a land, we get to... Oh, there's a land. All right. That's what we wanted. So we get to kick a Bushwhacker. And that's the classic turn four 8-whack kill. That's what we're trying to do. Ah, that feels good. That feels much better. All right, so our opponent's playing Ponza. We don't really have a lot for this deck other than just racing. Sweepers are certainly a concern. Blood Moon isn't good. They got a ton of basics. Skullcrack. Hmm. I wonder if Skullcrack is worth it. I don't know, they might have, like, Bayloss in the sideboard, or Thrag Tusks. Kitchen Finks, potentially. Maybe some Sweepers, Anger of the Gods. At least Blood Moon's a dead card. Yeah, I don't know. The only thing I'd really consider would be Skullcrack. Skullcrack, I think, is probably worth it. Go up Skullcrack, we're gonna go down one Heal Cutter, and... Kinda want the Mog Fanatic for killing Arbor Elves and Birds of Paradise, seems important. Kind of giving us additional lightning bolts. It might just be one chieftain. Yeah, let's go down one chieftain. Try it like that. Oh, uh, maybe it's pile driver. Eh, I don't know. This is fine. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, this is a good aggressive hand. We don't have a way to kill a turn one ramp spell. Well, we can't kill Utopia Sprawl anyway. There's Utopia Sprawl. Opponent passing. Well, Mountain Foundry Street. So this gets in one less damage right away, but it opens us up to playing two haste threats next turn. 
Winds of Deeth, Fona Cracks It, Forest, and Arbor Elf, and Birds of Paradise. Oh boy, so much ramp. Okay, Relic, I guess that just cycles. Well, let's see what we draw. Loyalist. We'll play a mountain. Play Goblin Guide. We just gotta hope they don't have it. Play Loyalist. Go attacking. If they can just untap and tighten, we're in very dead shape. Let's see what Goblin Guide reveals. Alright, Storm Breath I don't especially care about. I mean, Storm Breath is fine, but we can win through a Storm Breath. We can't win through Inferno Titan Wrathing our board. Turn three Inferno... Oh, draws a card. Probably looking for Inferno Titan. Wolf Run. Oh, come on. Please just be a Storm Breath. Please. Can I, okay, Storm Breath. That's good. That's excellent. That's what we were hoping for. Opponent's going to stay on defense. We draw a Mountain. So I think what we do is play the Mountain, kick a Bushwhacker, and now we're actually going to have to run through some numbers... So we attack with everything. Opponent blocks here. Three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, sh oh, maybe it's that we should have played... Maybe we should have just played Loyalist first. Yeah, I think that's what we were supposed to do. So we can sack something to kill Storm Breath. Yeah, I think that was wrong. Play Loyalist. Yep, that was backwards. Attack with everything. So we left a point of damage on the table. Hopefully that doesn't end up being an issue but this will put our opponent into goblin grenade range oh kitchen finks yikes okay opponent blocks a loyalist blocks blocks sure well we trample over for a lot of damage opponents down to five and pass the turn pass the turn they can't kitchen finks and titan which kind of makes me feel okay about where we're at kitchen finks up to seven Untaps. Oh, not another one. Oh, they can't cast another one. Alright, opponent plays Tireless Tracker. So I think we need any burn spell or any any creature. Actually, I'm not sure a creature does it. Opponent passing. Bushwhacker does it for sure. Burn spell does it for sure. Oh, that does it. Goblin Grenade. Sack. And Goblin Grenade. Sack. These are the things that the other build of goblins was missing. And that's 8-whack. We just absolutely whacked that Ponza deck. Whacked them. Alright, much brew time. Playing some 8-whack goblins in modern. And this hand's fine. Fine enough. We'll keep it. Three lands is kind of the maximum that we want, but we have we have a decent start. Fanatic, War Marshal, Kick Bushwhacker. It's a decent amount of damage. Misty Rainforest for our opponent. And... Passes. Well, Mountain, Fanatic, Goo. Bonacrex. I wonder if we should be playing Cavern. It might be worth it with all the j decks running around. It definitely increases the budget a lot, but it might be the most competitive build. Alright, Spreading Seas draws a card. Well, Mountain, War Marshal. Get in with the Fanatic. War Marshal's kind of nice because it does somewhat give us protection from a Wrath. Assuming we pay Field of Ruin. Not going to be good in this matchup. We have zero non-basics. Serum Visions. Ugh. Alright, well, since our opponent's tapped out of blue, I think we got to let War Marshal die and just kick a Bushwhacker Why our opponent's tapped down. Yeah. I mean, I would like to keep it around as Wrath Protection. But, getting in the damage is what we got to do. So we get to hit our opponent for 8. And if our opponent manages to Wrath, and it looks like they're going to, we're another red source away from... I mean, if we just draw land here, we can War Marshal Bushwhacker, and that sets us up to win. I'll play War Marshal. Pass the turn. We're pretty close. Another Field of Ruin. There's a Gideon. Ticks up on our Goblin. Mm, we're going to let War Marshal die. Play Mog Fanatic. Surge Bushwhacker. If our opponent's got a counter, this is where it's going to come out. 
All right, there's a mana leak. Pass the turn, pass the turn. We're still super close. These Fields of Ruin are actually making our opponent's mana pretty clunky. Normally, you kind of count on your Field of Ruin as, like, pseudo-fixing, but tough. It is tough uh, when you don't play against a deck with no non-basics. So maybe that's a upvote for not playing Cavern, actually. Sort of a weird fringe upside, but it's pretty relevant here. All right, takes up Gideon. More Field of Ruins. Opponent passes. We'll play Legion Loyalist. Opponent's going to Snapcaster Mana Leak. Yep. Yep. Can't pay. Attack our opponent. Attack our opponent. Blocks with Snapcaster. Opponent sounded two cards. Paths. I'll play another War Marshal. And pass the turn. Opponent still doesn't have Cryptic Mana. Thanks to you triple Field of Ruins. Takes up Gideon. Jace. Bounces the token. I think I think we got there. Unless they have unless their last card is another path. So let War Marshal die. Kick a bushwhacker. Everything at our opponent. Lightning bolt our opponent. No redirect. Stop on our opponent's upkeep. And Mog Fanatic for the last point. Jason Mind Sculptor. Better than all, except for Mog Fanatic. <laughs> Maybe this is actually better now than it used to be, because it kind of feels like we probably have a reasonable matchup against J Stacks. I mean, yes, they have Rasp, but if we're on the play and we get one of our good draws, geez, we are fast. So I think cards we're interested in, Blood Moon, for sure. Hmm. Fanatic doesn't feel that great. So we might go up Skullcrack, Skullcrack, Relic, Relic. Play the 61 card special. What else would we cut to go to 60? Dragon's Claw, no. Cage, no. Crypt, no. Heal Cutter, not great. Rabble Master's fine. Maybe we just play 61. Yeah, let's let's run 61. Uh, all right. Well. Mono One Drops is good against Blue White Control, and they have Path as their removal, so that potentially finds us more lands. Opponent, Fl Hollowed Fountain, and passes. We do kind of want one more land at least. Mountain, Goblin Guide. We just got to do it. Giving our opponents land is rough. Hollowed Fountain, but we just got to get in the damages while we can. Field of Ruin. Oh boy. Oh dear. Land, please. All right, we got a mountain. That's helpful. So, more goblin guides. Get in for four. Flooded Strand. Serum Visions. Pass the turn. Wow, I can't believe they left in Spreading Seas. They must just not have enough good cards, because Spreading Seas are not good against us. Ugh, Detention Sphere. Come on, land. Come on, land for this Blood Moon. would be so good. So good. Oh, it would be so good. One time. Land? Whew! Alright, Blood Moon you. Pass the turn. No blue manas. More mountains. Opponent passing. How do we want to do this? Let's Foundry Street Denizen. Goblin Pile Driver. We just need to close out the game as quickly as possible before they draw basics. More mountains. Opponent passes. Bushwhacker. Actually kind of awkward here. Let's just chieftain. Go attacking. Opponent to two. Pass the turn. I think we got there. Our one of Blood Moon from the sideboard. Jason Mind Sculptor. <laughs> Getting crushed by pretty budget friendly 8-whack. <laughs> Sweet. All right, much brew time. 8-whack goblins in modern. And uh, yes. Get a mulligan, the zero lander. All right, we're going to keep the one lander. Hopefully we scry... Ugh. Are we on the play? We're on the draw. I think we got to put Goblin Guide to the bottom. Goblin Guide is good, but I don't think it's good enough. Ugh, Chieftain. Oh, Foundry Street Denizen, pass the turn. Noble Hierarch is a little scary. Ancient Stirrings. Oh, is our opponent playing, like, Bant Eldrazi by the looks? Planes. Thalia, land, 
Goblin Guide still. I'll play Goblin Guide. Pass the turn. Can't attack into Thalia. Cavern. Alright, looks like Eldrazi in taxes. Alright, Sky Spawner. Spicy. Bonet. No attacks. Can't cast Lightning Bolt. Well, Legion Loyalist. Go attacking. Another Thalia on top. Well, we're trying hard, but with one land and a Thalia out, not feeling very good about where we're at. Ugh, Smasher. Yeah, gonna be hard to win this race. Opponent gets in for a lot. Down to 10. Jeez. If we had drawn one more land, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If we had drawn one more land, we would have had a shot, but... Well, sometimes you mulligan. Mulliganing on the, on the draw, pulling it off to a fast start. And yeah, we're going to just scoop it up. There's not really... Not really any reason to do anything else there. We can win this matchup, I think. We, uh, we need to have a little bit better of a hand than that. We are on the play for game number two, if Moto allows us to go to it. All right. Uh, I don't know how much we change against Eldrazi. Blood Moon seems okay, but not great. I guess we just go down Heal Cutter for Blood Moon and try it like that. All right, we get to play first. Jeez, we have so much burn. One land. We have like 16 points of burn, but none of it does anything if we don't draw a second land or not much of it. Still tempting to keep. We can bolt the birds, but then the burn's not going in our opponent's face. Aw, oh, jeez. If we had two lands, I don't know if we can keep this. I don't think it's fast enough. Yeah, I think we gotta ship it. <sighs> We've hit the wrong end of the variant stick. All right keep foundry street i don't even know if it matters i guess on top i guess our plan is one drop one drop one drop mog war marshal hope that maybe that's good enough there's thought not opponent passes misty cracks it well i mean with this hand down to 15 if we can draw a bushwhacker wow okay finds a cavern that is a greedy start play a mountain play foundry street Play Legion Loyalist. Go attacking. Drowner of Hope on top. Opponent down to 12. Island. Thalia. Sure. War Marshal. Pump. 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 Attack with everything. On top. Matter Reshaper. Opponent blocks. Drops to 7. Come on. No Eldrazi Temple. Alright. Cavern. Well, there's a pretty good chance we just win next turn. Matter Reshaper. Now there's a 100% chance we win next turn. No. Get a token. Pump. Oh, we can win any number of ways. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Kick a Bushwhacker. Well, that is a mull to five, boys and girls. Mull to five. That shows the power. We just got a turn four kill on the mull to five. And we had a Goblin Grenade left over. <laughs> this deck is really insane. It really, really is insane. Uh, yeah, especially for the price. Like, yeah, we have a Blood Moon in the sideboard. Yeah, we have the Goblin Guides. But this is still a really cheap deck. And this is like the tier version of it, not a budget version of it. Ah, oh, deck is so good. Ooh, boy. Whew, I like this. We don't have a way to kill the Mana Dork, but we got the Wax. We got the One Drops. Windswept Teeth. Opponent passes. Well, Mountain, Goblin Guide. Opponent cracks. They're just going to path. Eh, gets a forest. Not pathing. Get in my goblin guide. Drowner of Hope. A little bit slow. Pass the turn. Opponent's down to 17. You have my ghost. Opponent passing. We'll play a mountain. Play goblin guide. Play legion loyalist. Go attacking. Hit our opponent for five. Two goblin gu guide triggers. Temple garden. Sky spawner. Yup. Pass the turn. Opponent's down to 12. Cavern. I mean, yeah, they can Sky Spawner. Does it matter? I'm not sure. Matter Reshaper. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, here comes some damage at you, opponent. Kick a Bushwhacker. Go attacking. And our opponent needs, like, a Sweeper or something. Maybe if they hit an Eldrazi Temple, another Sky Spawner on top. Eldrazi Temple might give our opponent a slight chance. Assuming we don't draw a Goblin Grenade. Opponent blocks Goblin guide down to four gets a sky spawner well this is the big turn opponent needs something pretty good here island 
and Thought Not Seer takes our whack. Come on, Goblin Grenade. Boom. That is Goblin Grenade. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just do it. Goblin Grenade you. And that does it. That does it. Eight whack. Eight whack. Still getting the wins. Taking down Bad Eldrazi. <laughs> I forgot how much I love this deck. All right, much of brew time. We are mulliganing in modern. Playing some eight whack. Oh boy, not ideal. Mountain definitely to the bottom. Mountain go. Ugh, this is kind of the nightmare hand. Power plant. We really need to draw. Well, all right. Foundry Street Denizen. Play the mountain. Pass the turn. Yeah, this is looking a bit slow. Opponent cracks. Adds green. Ancient Stirrings. There's the tower. Trying to get that turn three Tron set up. And star. So one drop is probably our best draw. Well, that works. Mog Fanatic. Pump. Play the mountain. Surge of Bushwhacker. Pump. Hit our opponent. For a lot. Down to 12. Actually, if our opponent whiffs this turn, cracks. I mean, if we get one more turn, we win without them doing something major. All right. Setting up Tron, but I think we just kill our opponent. Mine. Two mana. Walking Ballista, X1. Are we still good? That's the question. Not sure. We got to think this through. Oh, Ballista. So we Bushwhacker... Opponent blocks, pings, takes four. Oh, that Ballista might actually win it for our opponent. So, Foundry Street Denizen, Bushwhacker with Kicker, Pump, 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 Attack with Everything. Ah, opponent blocks, pings. All right, well, no Karn, no Karn, no Karn. Opponents at five, that's Goblin Grenade life total. If they, well, maybe Karn's okay? Hmm. So if they Karn and tick up, we lose Goblin Grenade. And we have lethal. If they Ugin, then we need to draw a Goblin to have lethal. All right, so we need to draw a Goblin. And that is, that is basically it. Any of our one or two mana Goblins and we got it. Mountain. Pass the turn. That's not what we wanted. Sphere. Cracks it. Star. Cracks it. Scrying. Are we going to get one more turn to draw a goblin? Sanctum of Ugin. Play Sanctum of Ugin. Worm Coil. Well, this is it. We got to draw a goblin. If we draw a goblin this turn, we got it. Oh, all right. That is... A little unfortunate. <laughs> wow, that is a little unfortunate. All right, all right, all right. Well, uh, oh my goodness. That was brutal. Well, bring in Smash to Smithereens. Bring in Blood Moon. Go down Heal Cutter and a couple of Mog Fanatics. Good lord. Also, Shattering Spree. I think we're just going to go with Smashes, though. Yeah, try it like that. That was an inopportune time to draw two lands in a row. We needed any of our... We have 32 goblins in the deck. Any one of them would have won us that game. Well, we're going to try this. We really would love to top deck a land. <laughs> I'm sure now we probably won't. We did all of our land drawing last game when we didn't want to draw it. Foundry Street, go. Urza's mine, and star. Opponent passes. All right, there's a land. So play Foundry Street, pump. Play Legion Loyalist, pump. Go attacking, hit our opponent for four, and pass the turn. Whacker would be nice here. Opponent, Kraken, Stirrings. There's the tower. So potentially turn three, Tron. Tower, Stuzz, Fear. Opponent passes. We'll play Pile Driver. Hit our opponent for 5, down to 11. Pass the turn. Tron Oblivion Stone is pretty devastating. Sacks. Alright, Scrying. Man, are we going to get got by Ballista again? Same exact play. Alright, no Ballista. Goblin Grenade. 
Well, let's go attacking. Hit our opponent to one goblin grenade sacking Foundry Street. Whew, and we got there just fast enough. Oh, man. Uh, this means we got to win game three on the draw, though, when, oh, we were so close to winning that game two. So close. Or game one, I mean. All right, run it back. Yeah, we were super close to just winning the game one. All right, this is a pretty reasonable hand. Star for our opponent. Well, Mountain, Goblin Guide. Get in for two. Angel Stirring's on top. Pass the turn. Opponent. Cracks. There's the Stirrings. Oh, this is going to be close. Tower. Man, instant replay. Setting up for the Tron next turn. Expedition map. Opponent passes. Well, Mountain. Bushwhacker. Hit our opponent. Scrying on top. Down to 13. Map. Oh, we're so close. Power plant. Opponent passes. Ooh, mountain is very good. Play the mountain. Play goblin guide. Go attacking. Sphere on top. Goblin grenade. Lightning bolt. And we got there. Turn three Tron. We turn three Tron. Oh my goodness. Eight whack. <laughs> Opponent had turn three Tron every game, I think. I mean, they didn't have the ability to play the Karn. Wow. All right. All right, much brew time. Playing some 8 whack Goblins. And we're going to keep this. Hopefully we draw land number two, but this hand's pretty fine. I mean, if we draw land number two, it's good. Foundry Street Denizen. Pass the turn. Mountain. And Flame Blade Adept. Ugh. Okay. Well, there's the Mountain. Hmm. So let's... Legion Loyalist, Pump, Mog Fanatic, Pump, Attack for three. Opponent's going to trade off. All right. Pass the turn. Well, let's see if they get down Hollow Ones. Hollow Ones pretty big. Looting. Vengevine, Flame Wake discarded. Wooded Foothills. Yup. And Cycle Street Wraith. Ugh. Hollow One. Oh, please not two. Oh, dear. Yeah, that is a good start. A very good start. And I assume that's just game. Play Pile Driver. Play the Mountain. Pass the turn. Yeah, I'm not sure how we're going to deal a lethal amount of damage from this board state. Jeez, that is, a, that is just an insane start for our opponent's deck. Cycles of Street Wraith. Wow, this is... An interesting build of our opponent's deck. Attacks, attacks. Yeah, down to eight. Well, let's see. Mountain, pile driver, kick a bushwhacker, attack with everything. Is there any way this is enough? Wait, are we gonna win? Do we win? Oh my god! Oh my god! We're gonna win, aren't we? Holy! Holy! Opponent blocks. Opponent blocks. They had turn one, turn two, hollow one, hooting mandrels, get back, vengevine, attack. And our opponent scoops it up. Sweet. Well, I didn't think there was any chance that we were going to win that game. Wow. All right. Sideboarding against vengevine. I think we basically won our graveyard hate. Relic, relic, graph digger's cage, maybe Tormod's crypt. Go down heel cutter. Go down Mog Fanatics. Shattering Spree, no. Reality Hemorrhage, no. Uh, Skullcrack, Smash. Blood Moon's probably our right. Let's let's just try it like that. All right, we'll keep this. Mostly because Grab Figure's Cage is really good. Oh, man, we're so close. So close to the 5-0. Opponent, Flame Blade Adept. Yup. Well, play the Mountain. Grab Figure's Cage. Pass the turn. Oh, we'll see. Flame Blade is still a lot of damage without really using the graveyard. Insolent Neonate for our opponent. Plays a Stomping Ground tapped. And gets in for one. Sure. We'll play the Mountain. Play Pile Driver. Ship the turn. Next turn we can... Hmm. And eh, we'll have to see. We potentially have a lot of damage at some point. Flame Wake Phoenix. All right. That can't attack, though. Or block, though. 
Pony gets in, gets in. Well, this is looking like a race. Pony hits us for a bunch, but we're going to hit them back for a bunch. One drop. Pile driver. So play the mountain. Down to 15. I think we just play Chieftain. Hit our opponent with everything. 4-6. Pass the turn. And hope that we can win next turn if our opponent doesn't have removal. With hasty pile driver. Opponent cycles down to 12. Oh man, this is it. This is it. Oh, this is going to be so close. Opponent. Sacks. Pumps flame blade. I mean, if they can kill us here, then that's bad news. Gets in. Gets in. Yep. Down to 10. What's the follow up? Hollow one. Stomping grounds. Tapped. Opponent passes. Well, play the mountain. Play Legion Loyalist. Play Goblin Guide. Play Pile Driver. Go to combat. Attack with everything. Lots of pump in. And I think I think this might do it. Let's see if our opponent has lightning bolts. Let's see if they have lightning bolts. If they don't have lightning bolts, forest on top. Do we get it? Do we get it with 8-Wac? The 5-0? And our post whips it up! We got there! We got there! Woo! 8 whack Taking down the 5-0! <laughs> After the nightmare that was Red Black Goblins, uh, apparently this is a Goblin deck to play. So, uh, we'll open the chest in just a minute. Quick wrap-up. Don't play Red Black Goblins. Play 8 whack Please do that. Play 8 whack Well, this means we get to... Crack open a few treasure chests. Uh, yeah, six, 16 treasure chests, 8 whacking our way through that league. Man, well, people were just asking me, is 8 whack still the best starter deck in Modern? And I actually feel like it's better now than it was before. It seems pretty good against the J-Stacks, and we just kind of crushed everyone. We were getting, like, turn 3 kills or turn 4 kills on... Molda fives? The deck is just, it's insane. So, well, settle in, boys and girls. We have a lot of treasure chests to open, which means a lot of chances to get something sweet. 16 treasure chests. So, treasure chest number one we get. 15 play points. Eh, all right, whatever. Not great. Number two we get. Big Ale's Archive. Uh, I don't know if, if uh, Archive is actually worth anything. I'm going to have to look. I don't think so. El Hemorrhage Archive. Although I will say, one of my life goals for Modern is to brainstorm with Jace with El Hemorrhage Archive out. Seems pretty spectacular. Plunge into Darkness. Probably not worth anything either. 37 cents and 29 cents. All right. Well, 14 to go. Lots of time to hit something good. Clone Legion. Ugh. Not something good. Man, come on, treasure chest. Come on, you can do it. Ooh. Xenagos. That might be worth a little something. 0.74. Ugh. Not really. 12 to go. Come on, treasure chest. All right, 40 play points. 40 play points is good. That's like $4. That's more than the treasure chest is worth. Ooh, through the breach. Oh! Oh, it's a winner. We got a winner. We got a winner. Through the breach. Through the breach. Masterpiece. 10 tickets. Okay. Okay. That's good. And then walking ballista. Walking Ballista, 10 tickets, yes! All right, there's the winning treasure chest. So 20 tickets, that's like almost 10 treasure chests all by itself. Uh, sweet. And we still got 10 to go? Well, let's just do that again, every time. And we'll be rich. Ugh. Double rare, but it's Necrogen Mist and In the Web of War. All right. Last one before the halfway point, and Cerebral Vortex. Brazen Freebooter, Wing Shepherd, meh. All right, all right, all right. What do we get here? Ooh, Polluted Delta's good. That's a good one. Polluted Delta, I think it's actually been increasing. 10 ticks, 10.13. So we will take it. So we've opened three 10 tick cards so far. Twin cast, some commons. So I think we're doing pretty well, treasure chest wise. Angelic Skirmisher, Kaisel Corsair. All right, five left, five treasure chests left. Carry Zev, Skyship Raider. I don't know if that's actually worth anything, even though it's heavily played. Eh, three ticks, so not bad. We're something. Last four, down to the countdown. Clone, uncommon, common. Final three of our treasure chests. 10 play points, the weakest of the play point amounts. Final two. Come on, treasure chest. One more good open. Grimoire Thief. Hornswoggle. Love the name of that one. Workshop Assistant. Last one. 
final treasure chest. One last chance for something sweet. We get... Oh! Yes! Yes! Thoughtseize! Masterpiece! Also, get leave Archdruid. Thoughtseize! Masterpiece! Ten ticks! Ten ticks! So I think we actually did pretty well. Sixteen chests. We didn't get any, like, crazy high-end cards, but we got four ten tick cards and a couple like the carries evan stuff some play points so i think overall we got more ticks than if we just sold it because i think we would have got like eh, 30 something maybe 40 ticks if we sold them not bad not bad and our shrewd one of the original very first against odds cards so well that's eight wag We'll be right back with the wrap-up in just a minute. So what do we learn this week about 8 whack goblins in Modern? And the deck was absurd. The deck was so amazingly absurd. So after our pretty disappointing Red Black Goblins League, I'm really, really, really glad we decided to take 8 whack out for a spin for a whole bunch of reasons. First off, our performance was awesome. We went 5-0 in a competitive league, absolutely crushed people, beat a lot of the tier decks in the format, had some crazy, like, turn 3 kills. The deck is just, oh, it's so good. So that's number one. The performance was actually really good number two eight whack is the deck that i always say when people ask me what is the best budget starter deck for modern this is a deck i always tell people to play and this is not the full budget version it's 198 dollars, so a little bit more than budget but still 200 dollars is a great price for a modern deck especially one that's legitimately competitive and you can make this 150 dollars really easily like shattering spree in the sideboard it's fine it's not 100 percent necessary Necessary, going to more Smash to Smithereens, for example, Vandal Blast or something. That's not really a huge drop off, and that saves you a ton of money. Blood Moon is like 25 bucks. It's fine. It's good in some matchups, but it's again not 100% necessary. I don't even think Rabble Master is really good in the sideboard. I think you should drop it, even budget concerns aside. So you could easily play a pretty close to ideal version of 8 Whack for 150 bucks, which is just insane. Like the value you get from this deck is way above the curve it's competitive you could seriously win fnms with this you could play this at gps and have success with it because it is really good and one of the great things about it right now is i think 8 whack is even better today than it was uh last time we played it which was a while ago playing the budget version because it just lines up really really well with jace decks and everyone is trying to play jace right now and 8 whack is a great budget friendly way to just stick it to jace decks haste threats great against jace we go wide the bounce ability isn't very good we kill our opponent fast we can potentially kill our opponent before they even get to four mana for supreme verdict so just all around the meta is in a place where 8 whack is good the deck itself is really good the deck is really cheap we just crushed a league with it so i have to say like i have been saying this just reconfirms the fact that if you are looking for the most competitive budget starter deck for modern this is the way to go like it is aggro so as long as you like the tribal aggro play style this is the single best deck i think you can buy to first start playing modern assuming your goal is to win tournaments like if you want to have fun there's tons of different options some of them are probably more fun although killing people on turn three is pretty fun as well but there's tons of different options if you just want something that's like pretty competitive or maybe you don't like the aggro play style or whatever you don't like goblins i don't know so there's tons of options there, but if the goal is I want a chance to win a GP for the absolute least amount of money possible, I would tell you to pick up 8 Whack. I think this is the semi-budget deck that is closest to being able to win a GP or something like that. So as far as the deck itself, we mentioned some of the sideboard stuff. You can drop Shattering Spree, drop Blood Moon for budget purposes, but otherwise I think they're fine. Rabble Master, I'm not sure when we ever side that in. I don't think it's really needed in the sideboard. Maybe, I don't even know what you want to put in that slot but that's kind of a flex slot that you can change reality hemorrhage in theory makes sense to kill core firewalker in specific but also edge champion again i don't know if that's really necessary but maybe it's fine so you can definitely mess with the sideboard as far as the main deck i think the one change i would make personally i don't really like the goblin heel cutter might just be that we played matchups where goblin heel cutter is not very good but 
I was very impressed with Goblin Piledriver. There was at least a couple of games that we won by hasting in pile drivers, and I feel like the explosive potential of pile driver and the fact that we really want to close games out before our opponent gets to four mana to be able to wrath our board against J Stacks makes me want to just have the full playset of Goblin Pile Driver. So I'd probably drop Goblin Heel Cutter for the fourth Goblin Pile Driver. Otherwise, the other thing people ask about all the time, Fanatical Firebrand versus Mog Fanatic. I think Fanatic is better. I am not 100% certain on that. The upside of Fanatical Firebrand is you get to get in one damage right away on turn one, which is fine. Uh, although... <laughs> The funny thing is, I don't know how often you're going to play that on turn one, because we have a lot of one-drops, Foundry Street Denizen, or Goblin Guide. If you have that and Fanatical Firebrand, it's going to be correct to play either one of those over the Firebrand. So a lot of times, even though it's a one-drop, you might be playing another one-drop instead of it. The other thing is, the upside of Mog Fanatic is you're able to bushwhack, attack with it, and then still sacrifice it. Like if your opponent blocks it, or after combat. So I feel like that is probably the upside, and I think that upside actually makes Mog Fanatic better, even though that might be not 100% intuitive, and I could be completely wrong, but I plan on continuing with Mog Fanatic. I think it's slightly better than Fanatical Firebrand, so other than that, uh, if budget isn't a concern, I think maybe a Cavern of Souls could be good. It's risky. The deck doesn't draw many lands. Being able to double... Goblin Grenade, Double Lightning Bolt is sometimes really important, or Spell plus Goblin Grenade, but the ability to force through Bushwhackers against Control Deck seems like it could be pretty powerful. So I'm considering, if budget is no concern, one to two copies of Cavern of Souls. Otherwise, run it just like this, and again, the deck is just super legit. It is fun, it is fast, it is tribal, it is unique, it is everything you want in Modern, and if you're looking for a pretty much budget deck that could go out and compete at the highest level, I think this is your best bet in Modern right now. So, lines up well in a Jace Heavy format. It's been good enough for a while. So, if you're looking for that, my first Modern GP deck that actually has some chance of doing well, keep AWAC in mind because it is a great starter deck for the competitive scene. If your goal is just winning and not necessarily having fun and all that stuff, this is the way to go in Modern, I think. So, anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the videos, and I will We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.